What's going on ladies and gentlemen, today we're taking a closer look at 8 weapon mods in Remnant 2. These are ones that can be placed on any weapon with an open slot coming from both bosses and other sources as well. There may be a few diamonds in the rough or a couple that you might want to not use. I tried 8 unique weapon mods in Remnant 2 and here are the results. Concussive Shot fires a focused blast of air through all targets within 8 meters. It deals 155 damage and 5 times the impact. This can be purchased from Ava with a root ganglia at the start of the game, or you can buy it from her with scrap at any time after. I love this mod. Its damage is good enough to heal several smaller enemies that are ganging up on you. It'll hit in a good enough distance to be reliable without expert aim. The best part is the impact. Use this on even elites and it sends them reeling. You can really feel the massive thud when you send it off and it's great as a last resort situation. Enemy getting too close or you need to reload or something? Just send them packing. Now the main problem with concussive shot is there are better options. Tremor comes to mind as that one deals good stagger and lasts longer. You get very little benefit out of this in boss fights as the damage is too low to matter and it just doesn't have the same stagger effect. I will say that the advantage is the low amount of time required to recharge it. Without any rings or amulets to recharge the mod, it still comes back fast enough to be used every few seconds. You also get two charges at any given time, so it feels like a beginner mod, but not extremely weak. So no, maybe don't pick this up for S tier builds, but it is fun to use. The big boom you get when destroying a peon will feel pretty great. Firestorm creates a whirlwind cyclone that sucks in nearby targets and applies burning. The center of the cyclone also deals damage over its active duration. This can be found in Lawsom from the Red Prince boss fight as he tends to use it on you. Let's start by saying, uh, it's awesome. You can suck in a large group of enemies and burn them instantly. The center of the funnel also has great DPS in boss fights and quickly applies burning, making it an option you need to be thinking about. Plus, you throw it in for the cool factor, and it's a must use. It's definitely one of the most epic looking mods in Remnant 2, being able to reach higher flying enemies as well. Firestorm will keep enemies off of you, last a long time, and deal excellent DPS. Now, the weird thing for me is I think it's a bit overrated. I know people love this thing, and I agree it is awesome, but I also never use it. Firestorm only gets one charge, and due to how strong it is, you'll need a lot of shots to recharge it. Also, with the suction effect, it can be very easy to drop your own health to zero if you throw it in the wrong place at the wrong time. Being terrible in co-op as it instantly melts your teammates, this becomes more of a nuisance than anything else. Now, with certain items and builds, you can get that mod regen to be instant, allowing for multiple tornadoes of fire, which, that's an amazing way to play, I can't argue against that. I stick to Hotshot or Witchfire personally, as they're easier to control, but listen, if you like this one, it's one of the best mods. Time Lapse creates a 6 meter blast which freezes all standard enemies for 7 seconds. Dealing damage to frozen enemies breaks the effect applying slow to them. This can be found in Lawsome by completing a puzzle related to the clock tower there. It has a single charge and does what it says, freezes enemies on the spot for 7 seconds. A very useful tool when dealing with large groups or tough elites. The mod regen for it is not great, and I actually found a way around this by putting it on a bow. It didn't come back that great on automatic guns for some reason, but the bow had 5 or 6 shots and she was back. Pairing this with a bow will allow you to hit really high weak spot damage without any risk of missing. The slow effect also makes sure that it's still somewhat useful after you have the shot on the monster. A genuinely great mod that comes in handy for many of the meatballs on Yesha. No, it's not for bosses. Basically doing nothing, so I simply say, don't use it there. However, some mods specialize in things, and this one will really help you control battle, especially effective in co-op if you need to revive a friend or save him at the last second. Freezing your enemy in place is fun too, and grants you a nice ego boost if you need it. Healing Shot launches a payload that explodes on contact with allies, healing 30% of their max health. When no ally is struck, payload lays dormant until an ally gets close. Dormant payloads last 30 seconds. This is another starter mod that can be bought from Ava in Ward 13. I really think people are sleeping on this one as it has a lot of benefit in solo and co-op play. Starting off, it has low cooldown rate, so you don't have to shoot for long until it's back and ready to be used again. Two charges means you can use it recklessly and keep two mates topped off at any given time. Having an easy healing source like this allows you to use relics for other purposes such as mod regen. My favorite part has to be that the green orb stays on the ground for 30 seconds. That's a long time to be active. Also a fun strat to try is throwing down the balls every chance that you get. In a boss fight, you can regen the heal instantly and keep throwing it down all the time. 
giving you a fast heal that doesn't require any animation. Really nice for a full-on healer build, actually. Even better, if you want to be the medic for your minions or friends, the healer shot will build up that health meter when allies are healed, keeping you topped off on relics. No, I can admit this isn't the best mod because it takes the place of something that could be doing more damage. Regardless, it introduces an alternative way to heal and something that makes co-op a bit more interesting. Trying to shoot your buddies with it and not miss is also quite the experience if you have yet to try it. I'm always telling my brother to step back a bit or go left, go left. Helix shoots a helix of missiles dealing 120 damage. On contact, it divides into six smaller rockets, which seek out additional targets, dealing 30 damage. You can grab this one from Narud, and it's pretty mediocre at best. You need to be very accurate with the mod, and since there's loads of others that require zero accuracy, this just doesn't feel easy to use. Then you take into account the damage, and like, still not that great. They are mini missiles, so you can pair them up in an explosive build to get some decent fire damage as well. And since you get two of them, that requires a little effort to regen them back up for use. They aren't worthless. In a decent enough build, you can make it work and have some interesting combat with the missiles flying off hitting other random enemies. But compare this to Firestorm or any boss weapon mod and you're trying too hard. I'd say this is a very low tier weapon mod that should be used only if you know what you're doing. And even then, good luck. Prismatic Driver fires a superheated beam, which deals 25 mod damage per second. Sustaining the beam on a target causes an explosion, which deals 150 mod damage in a 3 meter AoE. You can find this one on Nerud as well, and it's actually interesting. Essentially just being a laser that builds up massive explosions. When they go off, they usually kill the target unless they're an elite. Even against bosses, that AoE will get rid of a good chunk of health. When paired with some mod regen rings and some explosive equipment, you're looking at a solid option. Kind of odd as this thing just kind of trumps Helix in almost every single way. You need to charge it up with a few beam pulses, but this doesn't take long with enough focus fire, and you can get several off in a short time. I will warn you, this can backfire if enemies run at you. The AoE can be tough to stop if you aren't paying attention, and it blasts you back in a very unhealthy manner, which could make it tough to use with teams. Nowhere near one of the best mods in the game, but it has potential. If you're looking for a general mod to go on any build to get a good buff, nah, I'd look somewhere else. But this is more in the lines of pure mod power and explosive synergy between amulets. Rotted Arrow fires a rotten arrow that deals 20 damage and detonates for another 60 damage within 4 meters. A deadly gas cloud is left behind that deals 200 damage over 5 seconds. You can find it on Yesha, and I know this one's good. How much you ask? Well, every time I shoot it, I end up melting my own health with it. The blast is particularly good, and that cloud's gonna suck away health like crazy. Three charges come with this one, making it very easy to keep the cloud active. Setting off three of them in a hallway means nothing's getting through, and it gives you some damage over enemies you aren't really focusing down that heavily. Since the clouds don't last long, they can't instantly kill a boss for you, but you can use them to great effect in boss fights regardless. Set them off whenever you get a chance, and that overtime damage racks up. Unfortunately, this mod has a similar problem with many of these mods. Most of the challenging bosses in Remnant 2 move. They'll teleport, fly, and dash quickly across the screen, trying to mess with your vision or escape your damage. A cloud of dust that causes you to cough can't really keep up. For other bosses that stand still more, it's a different story, and you can actually use it as a smoke screen to revive an ally or prep for a damage phase. Of all the mods on this list, I was most intrigued by Rotted Arrow. Fun to use and comes back super quickly. If done right, you could possibly shoot this almost as often as your gun, and then you'd really be in business. Kinda reminds me of the Frost mod in Remnant from the Ashes that you could leave on the ground to slow and damage enemies. Skewer fires a wretched spear which embeds itself on contact. Spears deal 125 damage on hit, rapidly dividing inside the target until bursting, dealing 140 damage to all targets within 3 meters. Spears embedded in the environment remain in place for 10 seconds. You can find this one on Root Earth, which is the last world you're going to complete. If you ever have a time where you're looking at your mod, and it says over a thousand mod requirement, and you notice it's just really hard to get that mod back, remember this video. So many of these mods are really fast to recharge because they freaking suck. Skewer doesn't seem particularly good in easy modes, let alone the top two. Skewer will deal some decent damage and it also looks pretty mean while doing so, but something feels off about it. I remember there being a lot of goofy mods in the first game as well, but the sequel has more, I think. Why well, use this mod that can work if played correctly when others obliterate the game no matter what? Definitely some balance issues on Skewer as it's not hard to use, but there really isn't any reason to use it. You get two uses at any given time, and the advantage being it can be placed as a trap. Put it on the ground and waiting for the prey to come. I say, bury it in the backyard. 
Skewer feels like the baby version of a really good mod that just refuses to grow up. Well, there you have eight unique mods in Remnant 2. I tried them, so you don't have to. We started out with some really interesting mods that have really good uses or just add fun to the gameplay. Then the last four were just kind of, wow, why do these exist? Skewer, Rotted Arrow, Helix, and even Prismatic Driver a bit don't work that well. The ideas behind them usually involve copying a boss's move directly, but in such an underpowered way. When in doubt, use Firestorm, Hot Shot, or Acid Shot. None of those are going to let you down while providing something valuable to your build. And don't get me wrong, if you like one of these mods, it's because when used correctly, they can work. But holy cow, the bar is set really low. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and feel free to leave a like if you did. Remnant 2 has turned out to be one of the most fun and addicting games to come out in a while. You can really test your limits against some of these bosses, but don't go into a fight with weapon mods that aren't going to give you a fighting chance. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.